In this video, we're going to talk about how you um, find the inverses of one-to-one -one functions. Um, to do that, here, I'm going to go ahead and write this down. If I can find my cursor, there it is. To find the inverse of a function, switch the x and y to uh, then, not to, then get y by itself. Oh, that's not, it's not functino, it's function. Oh, and it's, wow, okay. <clears throat> so to find the inverse of a function, what you do is you switch the x and the y, and then get y by itself. So let's go straight into an example so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, let's say, for example, um, we want to find the inverse of f of x equals 2 plus 7x. Well, remember that when I say switch the x and y, for all intents and purposes, y and f of x are the same thing. So let's go ahead and rewrite this with y. So that means we have y equals 2 plus 7x. And well, the first thing we want to do is we want to switch the x and the y. So we have y here and x here. Let's just switch them around. So we get that x equals 2 plus 7y. So all I do is I switch x and y. So now that we have um, x and y switched, remember as if we if we write it as a function, the y needs to be by itself. So I go ahead and I subtract two from both sides. We have x minus two equals seven y. I just subtracted this 2 from both sides to get x minus 2 equals 7y. And now I want to divide both sides by 7 to get y, to get y by itself. So we have um, x minus 2 over 7 equals y. So now we've gotten y by itself. So we have the inverse of f of x. So we can go ahead and write this as f inverse of x equals x minus 2 over 7. So that was easy enough. We just switched out x and y and then solved for y. So let's go on to another example. find the inverse of f of x equals 6 plus x to the fifth. So, oops. So we want to go ahead and write this as in the form of, write it with y instead of f of x. So we have that y equals 6 plus x to the fifth. And now I want to go ahead and switch them out. And you don't, you don't really need to write out switch. The reason why I'm writing that out is because um, I don't want to give the impression that f of x and f inverse of x are the same thing. So this does not imply um, the switch. The switch is a completely different function. That that may have made that even more complicated. I did not intend for it to. So we have x equals 6 plus y to the fifth. So now we have x and y switched, so we need to go ahead and get y by itself. So we subtract 6 from both sides. So we have x minus 6 equals y to the fifth. And now um, we to, to take the inverse of both sides, we want to go ahead and take the fifth root of this. So that means we're going to have x minus six square a uh, fifth root of x minus six equals y. So um, remember that this is not a 
a uh, even number. Five is an odd number, so we can go ahead and take take the fifth root of both sides without have to without having to worry about plus or minus. It's only for uh, even powers that you need to care about the plus or minus. So now we have that y is the fifth root of x minus six. So we can rewrite this as um, f of f inverse of x. So f inverse of x is going to be the, oops, I did something wrong here, but I'm not sure what it was. Ah, here we go. Okay, so f inverse of x is the fifth root of x minus 6. So let's go ahead and go over both of these, just, well, not, not both of these, but just the concept at the same time. To find the inverse of a function, you switch x and y. You just switch, re replace x with y and replace y with x. And then you get y by itself. And then you can replace the new y with f inverse of x. So, these are going to be the, um, going to be the, the, the inverse of the functions. Now, just so you know, I want to go ahead and show you what we're doing um, in the technical sense whenever we invert a function. So uh, let let's take a look at this right here. X plus I'm sorry, six plus y to the fifth. Oh, I'm sorry, six plus x to the fifth. So let's let's plot that original function. So six plus x to the fifth. That's going to look kind of strange. So so um, it's um. Well, that's probably not a good, good example, actually. Let's go to the previous example. Uh, yeah, that is a better example. So 2 plus 7x. OK, so here is 2 plus 7x. It's a line. So let's plot the inverse as well. So 2 plus 7x is the original. The inverse is f of x equals 6 plus x, wait, wait, that's the wrong problem. Sorry, the inverse is going to be x minus 2 over 7. Okay, okay. So, they're both lines, of course, but what exactly did we do? Well, what we actually did was we flipped this around. See, let's say there's a, there's a line... Oh, let me get this closer to the middle of the screen, actually. So let's, let's plot a new line. This is not based on any of these, but it's just going to be this right here. This green line is f of x equals x, and whenever we are finding the inverse of a function, what we're doing is we're flipping it around this f of x equals x. So if I could find a, um, if I could f find like a 3D representation of how we're flipping it, I would. But basically, you can kind of see how this blue line and this green and this red line are are kind of mirror images of each other across the green line. So let's come up with, let's do a new one. Let's do um, x to the third and the cube root of x. So x to the third and cube root of x. Okay, so x to the third is going to be this blue line right here. And so if we flip it across the green f of x equals x, then we will get this red line, this red curve right here. This is the inverse because it's flipped across this green line. Okay, that concludes this video. Uh, I will see you in chapter 12.